In this lesson, we'll explore two datasets. They are nothing but Toyota sales data and sales reps data. The datasets are in these two CSV files. This is related to Toyota sales data. This is related to sales reps data. Here, our goal is to familiarize ourselves with the structure and content of the data. We'll use foundational pandas methods to load and inspect the elements. This will set the stage for more advanced topics like cleaning, transformations, and analysis in later sections. In this case, I have created a new notebook. The notebook name is nothing but 015 Exploring Auto Sales Data. Let me collapse this. First, let's make sure we choose the appropriate kernel. As the appropriate kernel is chosen, now let's say import pandas as pd. It will take care of importing pandas with alias pd. We should be able to use functions in pandas by saying pd dot. Keep in mind, pandas is the go-to library for data analysis in Python. Uh, let's first start with import like this and then we should be able to take it further. Now let's go to the details about how to load CSV files into pandas data frames. First you need to identify the path. You can see the path here. In the same project folder we have data folder. Within that data folder we have current score sales and then we have two CSV files. In this case first let us try to read the data in Toyota sales data. I'll be creating a variable by name Toyota underscore data. Then we have to say pd dot read underscore CSV. Then we have to specify the path. The path is nothing but data then car sales. Let me make sure the folder name is correct. It is nothing but car sales. Then we have to specify the actual file name. The file name is nothing but Toyota underscore sales underscore data dot CSV. You can see the path displayed here, which means this is correct path only. Now we should be able to run this. You can use shift enter to run. You can see it have ran successfully. We should be able to preview the details by saying dot head. Now let me say Toyota underscore data dot head. You can see the results here. It have displayed the first five records from the data frame. Keep in mind this Toyota underscore data is nothing but pandas data frame. When you use read underscore CSV function like this, this will actually return a pandas data frame. The data frame will contain all the data from the CSV file. Pandas data frame is a special object. In the similar fashion, you should be able to read the data from sales rep data dot CSV or sales reps data dot CSV. Now you should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data then equal to then pd dot read underscore csv then data car underscore sales then sales underscore reps underscore data dot csv now we should be able to run this even this one ran successfully you should be able to preview the data by saying sales reps data dot head you can see the first five records from this data frame as well. This is how you should be able to take care of reading the data from CSV file into the data frame and then review the data in the data frame. In this case, we used pd.read underscore CSV to load the datasets into pandas data frames. The dot head is nothing but a function which actually shows the first five rows. It gives us a quick preview. Uh, in this case, each row which you see here represents a record. So this is one row. It represents a record and each column holds specific information. Here when it comes to sales reps data, we have columns such as rep ID, first name, last name, email, so and so forth. When it comes to sales data, here are the records or rows. When it comes to pandas data frames, they have function called as info. Info will provide information about the data frame. Let's try to use info on top of this data frame first. It is nothing but Toyota underscore data. Now if I say info, then run this. You can see the details here. It have not only displayed column names, even the data types are displayed. On top of column name and data type, we also have something called as non-null count. You can see when it comes to sale ID, we have 5,000 non-null records. Uh, same is the case with sale rep ID, sale date, car model, sale amount, and sale status. However, when it comes to commission percentage, we have only 3,726 non-null records or non-null values. Uh, the remaining are null values when it comes to commission percentage. The total number of records in this data frame is nothing but 5,000. 
you can actually see the details here. In this case, it is also displaying the index values. The index values related to this data frame is in the range of 0 and 4999. This is how you should be able to interpret the info output. When it comes to info, it provides an overview of the dataset including column names, data types and missing values. This step helps us identify potential issues such as missing data or incorrect data types which we will address later in the course. That being said, I'll leave it as an exercise when it comes to using info on top of sales reps data. Try to use info on top of sales reps data and try to interpret the result. Don't forget about that. If I am not demonstrating anything related to sales reps data, Make sure you experiment by yourself based on whatever I cover on Toyota data and then you can take it further. Now let's try to check the dataset dimensions. For that we should be able to use shape. Shape will give us the number of rows and columns. In this case I'll be invoking shape on top of Toyota data. Keep in mind shape is not method, it is attribute. Info is method but shape is attribute. Hence we will not be having brackets at the end. When it comes to the shape, it will be something like this. The data frame name, then a dot, then shape. No brackets at the end like this. Because it is not a function, it is just attribute within the data frame. Now let me run this. You can see the outcome here. It have returned a tuple. The first element in the tuple is nothing but number of records in the data frame. The second element in the tuple is nothing but number of attributes or columns in the data frame. When it comes to shape, it tells us how many rows and columns each dataset has. This is useful for understanding the dataset's scale. Once again, try to get the details about the shape on sales reps data data frame.